a bass, again, there's just a lot of material. He goes and he talks about, you know, Egyptian stuff and Anubis, uh, other Greco-Roman deities. You know, when he moves to, to Second Temple material, there's an interesting uh, couple of sentences here. He says, when we move into the Jewish literature before and after the time of the New Testament, angels are predominantly said to possess the keys. Among them, among these angels are Metatron, Yaol, Eremiel, or Uriel, and the archangel Michael. They are all said to possess the keys to either the underworld or the kingdom of heaven. Instead of having the keys to the levels of heaven, other angels are said to have the keys to Hades. Now, that's the end of the quote. For me, the, the most interesting one there is Yahoel, which is Yahoel. And if you've ever heard me lecture on the two powers in heaven in Jewish literature, you know that name. Okay, Metatron is another. Uh, they're, they're the most interesting because Yahoel was, one of, was the second power to, to a number of Jews. So if you're thinking that, you got two powers thinking, you got, you got binatarian thinking, binatarian Jewish monotheism. But for the New Testament and John, who really holds the keys? It's Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it figures right into this flow, this trajectory of thought. Now, Eremiel is interesting, though, and I, I'm going to read a little bit about him, what Bass says uh, about his imagery, this other angel. He says, the apocalypse of Zephaniah has striking parallels with the first vision of Revelation. Zephaniah says, Then I arose and stood, and I saw a great angel standing before me with the face shining like the rays of the sun in its glory, since his face is like that which is perfected in its glory. And he was girded as if a golden girdle were upon his breast. His feet were like bronze, which is melted in a fire. And when I saw him, I rejoiced, for I thought that the Lord Almighty had come to visit me. I fell upon my face, and I worshipped him. He said to me, Take heed, don't worship me. I am not the Lord Almighty, but I am the great angel Eremiel, who is over the abyss and Hades, the one in which all the souls are imprisoned from the end of the flood, which came upon the earth until this day. It's the end of the quote. Now, clearly, Eremiel has replaced Christ in this vision. <laughs> you know, Bass notes that Christ has replaced Eremiel if Revelation was written after the apocalypse of Zephaniah, or they're both using a common source, you know, if, if, if it's before. You know, either way, Christ is presented as deity in Revelation because he accepts worship from John. Did you catch that difference? See, all, all, everything that I just read to you sounds really like Revelation 1, except for one detail. Okay, Jesus doesn't say, oh, don't worship me. <laughs> I mean, it, this is, it's just really clever. Again, if, if you are a literate Jew— and you're familiar with the apocalypse of Zephaniah and the, the, the keys stuff and all the stuff we've been talking about to this point. And you get to, it, you get to Revelation 1 and you're familiar with this, this apocalypse passage. Oh, it's just like this other guy wrote, uh, except for one thing. Jesus does not refuse to be worshipped. In fact, he's equated with, he's, you know, the imagery of him is aligned with the Ancient of Days. We've already talked about this. He is the one who has the keys of death in Hades. Okay, and he, he's God. Okay, I mean, how, how many ways can John say it? How many ways can John take a familiar idea to his readers? Again, because he has to describe what, what the angel has shown him, whether it's a vision or something the angel shows him, or, or both, you know. It's like six of one and a half, a dozen of another. And he, it's strategic, okay? You know, I'm sure when John's having the vision, you know, the angel doesn't say, "Now, when you go down, when you go back down, when you get, when you get, you know, in your right mind here, here's a great passage to look up, you know, to to help you out." No, I mean, he's he's showing him things, but John is familiar enough with the material, and and he, you know, how do I how do I get the point across? How do how do I, you know, describe what I've seen? Oh yeah, there's that apocalypse of Zephaniah thing. That, that, that's really useful, you know, or, or Daniel seven or you know whatever. So, so he's going to use something, whether it's Old Testament or some other text that his readers know, to, you know, to illustrate what this was like, what he was, was he actually seeing. But he's going to tweak it too. He's going to make sure the theology of, of, of the deity of Jesus doesn't get lost. And, and even that, even that he's going to show is consistent with Jewish two powers in heaven thinking. This, the, the risen Christ is the second power. Not some angel, whether it's a biblical angel or you know, Second Temple Jewish literature angel. It, it, it's not these. It's none of these. It's him. 
Okay, it is the risen Christ who is the second power, and now he's the holder of the keys because of the resurrection. 